Alrighty, hello every folks and welcome to another, uh, I guess technically the second revision of the One Vision tier list. Uh, because a few things have happened uh, up to the point of uh, this patch. So current patch is 0.977 and uh, given that a few areas got largely re reworked now, I um, feel like it's probably about time to go give this another look. Kind of just update where everyone's at at this moment uh, since a lot of stuff has kind of moved around. So, alright, let's uh, get going here. First order of business, archers. Um, well, they're still kind of an A tier. The, so, I'm kind of tempted almost to drop them to, to B, but they, they've had a few changes here. So, for one thing, since last patch, archers are faster at actually firing now, although they did end up losing access to poison arrows. Uh, basically, uh, poisoned uh, attacks are not a thing. Um, when, well, that is to say they exist, but not for arrows. Uh, the Art of War, uh, you know, like, air, basically poison coating thing. Uh, was taken out uh, since there was a uh, poison rework. So, in general, uh, they're, they've just kind of been bit, uh, become better at uh, silencing, stunning, you know, damaging in general. Their usual kind of stuff, but uh, the uh, recovery time on their finishers is improved. The uh, general firing speed of theirs has been improved. So, still solid A tier, good at their job, you know, solid across the board. Uh, but um, I'm, I'm gonna miss those poison arrows. I know it's a, it's a weirdly specific thing, but it's just one of those things that was really fun to cheese. All right, next up, uh, Astromancer. Um, you know, probably uh, uh, probably still an A tier to be honest. Um, so yeah, still gets access to all magic and everything else. Still a very good unit overall. It's just you gotta go through literal hell to get him. So uh, all right, we'll just go ahead and leave him right there. Uh, Berserkers. Uh, you know what? It, it's kind of hard to place them right now. Like, I, I kind of feel like they're like they're a B, B tier at the moment. So once again, a lot of like little rebalances here and there. Um, as far as glass cannon units, I feel like um, it's not like they're really lacking in defense as much. Like they're, they're definitely noticeably uh, more targeted than some of the other frontliners. Um, but just in general, I feel like it's kind of hard to justify going uh, double weapons on them. Like, I've seen some folks say that uh, they like double hammers, which is a bit on the slow side. Personally, I still like, you know, claw and axe and all that kind of thing. Um, it's mostly just the fact that uh, their whole health sacrificing thing these days feels a bit more a bit more risky, so to speak. Like, I feel like a lot of... Um, their, their big thing before was just, like, you put, you put down uh, blood price, um, you... Uh, now you go ahead and you charge forward and you just smash finishers over and over, but I feel like a lot of classes uh, can kind of go into that whole uh, uh, finisher spam roll. But uh, but yeah, with the Berserkers, I kind of feel like um, if there's multiple of them, like if there's two or three on the team, they're going to do really well. Um, but just like a lone Berserker in your team kind of feels like they might be better off being something else. Um, so I'm not really sure how to address that. Uh, they definitely uh, still do the same job that they always did. Just... Uh, Maybe they uh, they need a little looking at, but either way, they they still do their job just fine, just not as exciting as maybe they once were. Uh, let's see, Buccaneer. Um, okay, compared with some of the other stuff we'll see in S and A tier, that's probably the only reason they'd be in B. They're they're a good trickster unit. Traps are still great. Um, it's mostly just because not very many units can use them, and you got to go through some stuff to get them. You know, whatever A tier, still definitely the best one on one fighter in the game. Uh, kind of putting, putting it that way. Um, like, as far as being a duelist goes, they're definitely the best at that. Uh, still get pretty decently countered by casters and things like that, but a very, very good class. Main downside is just what you have to go through to get them. Though, that being said, you know what, actually... No, you know what, I take that back. S tier, because you don't have to go through as much these days, uh, because you can't always get the forgery book. Um, so yeah, it's still, best one-on-one -on -one fighter in the game. Highest dexterity, if I recall correctly, and uh, looking stylish as hell. But uh, but yeah, uh, they're definitely more of a solo act kind of deal. All right, next up we got clerics. No shocker there. Still an S tier. Still amazingly good at what they do. Um, still usually going to be one of the last units left on the field when everybody else is smushed. Um, very resilient. Very hardy. Uh, their armor options are definitely showing more and more these days. Um, so uh, so yeah, I, I feel like they've even gotten tougher in recent patches, but. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, they've uh, they've got a pretty nice uh, variety of different things available to them, um, and uh, it's it's interesting. They're actually potentially one of the best whip classes at the moment, though I'm not really sure if you necessarily want to do that. Uh, one of the biggest uh, punches uh, with the uh, with the whip is being able to use Armageddon, and they can't ever augment it, which is 
I think they're the only class that actually them and priest, I believe, are the only ones uh, that can't actually augment the whip, um, or at least the final whip finisher. Uh, they can still go like the wind route or stuff like that. Um, but then again, you really wouldn't be using them for that kind of role in most cases anyway, so that's kind of an ultra niche situation. They're already good enough as it is. It's not like they really need anything extra. All right, uh, next up on the list, uh, the good old chicken. Um, I feel like they're C tier these days. So, okay. And for comparison, we'll do Griffin next. The reason I say C tier on the chicken, um, let's see. So, basically, just like the Griffin, they're a very, uh, very fast unit. They're good at getting around, things like that. Um, now, one. So I've noticed, uh, like, I, I would show up and occasionally read comments of how uh, new folks are going through the game and stuff like that. And I feel like at one point, um, when folks were a bit unprepared for how good petrification was and things like that, they they might have been more of an issue. But I feel like these days they're kind of kind of just balanced. Folks that have been around for a while are pretty uh, pretty fairly uh, well aware that it's like you either kill the chicken or you don't attack it at all. Um, and they're squishy enough that you can still pull that off, uh, you know, pretty reasonably. Uh, you can usually uh, finish them off in one round. Um, but that being said, I kind of feel like with uh, with newer players and stuff like that, they I haven't seen as many folks running into it. And the only thing that I can assume in that regard is that maybe it's just the fact that uh, they're usually, you know, pretty fast at coming and going and all that kind of thing. Maybe, um, maybe just they get themselves surrounded more often than not on the maps that they appear on. Um, if you end up using them yourself, they're pretty solid. I mean, I kind of feel like they fill a very similar role to the Griffin, uh, but it just depends entirely on what you run into. But, um, but yeah, I don't feel like they're as cheesy as they once were. Maybe, um, maybe it's just by comparison, because I don't think very much has actually changed um, on, uh, on how they go. I mean, an empowered cockatrice with Stone Circle is still just devastating. Um, I think they can do like three, four hundred in a huge area. Uh, not to mention potentially disable all of those units. So, hmm, I, it might just be because so m there were so many equipment buffs that uh, some monster units have kind of fallen behind lately. Maybe that's just personal experience. It's really hard to say when there's so many changes flying around. And uh, you know, maybe we'll just change that and bump them up to a B. Why not? All right. Uh, next, uh, we got uh, uh, we got the uh, good old Fusilier here. Uh, I think they're an A tier these days. Good, uh, good potential long range options. Good potential short range options. Their main downside before was casters, especially debuff casters. And uh, since their last patch, uh, they've gotten Fumarol, which is basically like a long range. Uh, you are not going to hit your debuffs move. And uh, and yeah, so basically it shuts down debuff casters when it hits them. Um, so I feel like that one's really, uh, really solid there. Uh, the AI also <laughs> doesn't derp out as hard now, because, uh, before they would dump, uh, barricades all over the dang place. Uh, now they'll go for the debuff instead. So as of, uh, the last thing, gave it a shot, they seem to be working just fine. Um, so yeah, good damage, good counter options, um, th they do come a bit late in the game, but, you know, they're not exactly difficult to get a hold of. Um, most of their weapons you get pretty much right away, so you don't have to go too far out of your way to keep them equipped. Uh, even the first uh, weapons that you keep a hold of can, you know, can basically carry them for a really long period of time. Uh, not to mention, uh, one thing that I haven't mentioned too much is their ability to carry those skills over to other classes as needed, uh, which is uh, where we're going to bring in the, uh, the Dragoon here. Um, but yeah, I kind of feel like Dragoons are S-tier these days. Uh, for for a couple reasons, but we'll get to it. But like one of the potential career paths that I've seen come up in a couple of runs now is just going Fusilier into Dragoon, um, because yeah, you, you end up uh, getting their Fusil skill up. You end up having somebody that you want to have a have uh, serve as a frontliner for a little bit. So you let them keep their pistol and you give them some heavy armor and you put them into Dragoon. And you know, sure, why not? It's odd, but it works. Now, why the hell is Dragoon S tier? You might ask. Well, for a few things. For one thing. Like, it's just like, it's a very generally useful class these days. Pretty much any other, like, any other class that they've been before can potentially turn into a Dragoon. Were they a good spellcaster? You got a Burst Dragoon. You, were they a gun guy? Have them go do that. Or go like crossbows, or, like, uh, any kinds of swords or spears or axes or anything else. So they, they potentially can, uh, can be an evolution to a lot of classes. 
Uh, when it comes to stuff uh, like Beast uh, Slayer, Dragon Slayer, and stuff like that, sure, it's not as strictly necessary as it was before, but with the sheer number of options available to them, with the crazy amounts of uh, bonus damage that you could potentially stack up in one vision, um, you can do some really good stuff with them. I feel like, like personally, I still like using a Dragoon in every, uh, every party. Um, obviously, everyone's opinions will vary. I, they're not, like, super obligatory like they were before, but... Um, you know, I feel like they're just a very solid uh, unit across the board, and hell, in those cases where you've got your, uh, you know, your mass cockatrices or things like that, uh, having an AOE buff to uh, beast damage is pretty useful as well. Um, so, I'm sure there will be some disagreement on putting them into S tier, but I think they belong there personally. Alright, next up, uh, we have the Cyclops, and this is going to be strange because I'm putting that sucker in A. Now, Sure, he's got fear. He's got uh, he's got his other debuffs on him as well. He's a pretty decent caster, but decent. They're not like super overwhelming as they are. But you know what they're really useful for? Auction items. So the thing is, uh, before um, like before they did glass pumpkins. Okay, that's all well and good. That's one specific side quest. In recent patches, this was actually changed to uh, any time that you recruit a uh, cyclops and sell it you get wild cards. So wild cards are pretty much any card that you want them to be. So that kind of brings us uh, brings us pretty neatly into the next S tier, which is going to be which is going to be the rogue um, because yeah, traps are potentially some of the craziest damage and craziest just general options that you can run into with one vision right now. Uh, anything from complete invulnerability to physical or magical type stuff uh, uh, like a half uh, health heal, um, uh, MP recharge, uh, just an action move haste. There's almost no reason to even keep Speed Star on them anymore because you can just put down a trap for that instead as long as you have that movement option available to you. Um, you potentially have almost every debuff in the game, uh, both uh, light and heavy, available to them. Like, they they get so many good options for traps, and, uh, and yeah. So, Cyclops might be a kind of mediocre unit by itself, but then it gets boosted up to A just on the fact that it drops three wild cards, which can become any card uh, for the rogue, and the rogue is like the top of the S tier right now as far as I'm concerned. You know, we'll just, we'll just go ahead and do the thing that people always say to do and just bump him all the way up to the very top. Um, yeah, it, like, I feel like they're, they're better than clerics, they're, they're better than pretty much anything else. Like, they can do anything. And, uh, yes, that does include, uh, does include Lord. Who we're actually also going to put in the S tier. Um, probably going to put them. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll put them over there. there we go. Make it look a little bit like this, I suppose. Um, so this one should be obvious. Uh, it, I mentioned last time that uh, their stats are pretty mediocre, and I will say, as far as the like the rogue goes, they're fast enough to make up for the uh, the relatively weak defense. Um, when it comes to Lord, though, the sheer potential cheesiness of the different combinations that they can use completely make up for any mediocre stats. Um, like, the current fast build I've been using for the solo run is, uh, like, Phantom plus, uh, uh, plus the, uh, Grimmelkin plus, uh, Flying Boots, uh, plus a Reaver Ring. Uh, creating a situation where they're really fast, really lucky, immune to a lot of debuffs just off their gear, plus any skills that are available, um, plus potentially able to augment and still make use of any, uh, uh, almost any spells that the uh, cleric can use as well. Actually, no, literally they can use all of them. Um, so it puts a lot of weight on one unit, but he is absolutely the epitome of the custom class at this point. Um, he's never going to be as exactly good at any particular thing as a specialist, of course, but uh, you can do some very, very cheesy things. You know, heavy armor with light weapons, light weapons with heavy armor, or uh, uh, heavy weapons with ultra light armor that is only for spellcasters and things like that. Uh, you get all kinds of uh, just weird cheesy combos. I mean, you, you don't want the flight boots, you get Art of War on there. You, you just have him ignore elevation entirely. Uh, he can use Tabula Rasa, uh, which, it, <laughs> I mean, if. Alright, if there was no Tabula Rasa from the Cleric class on a Lord, it would probably go down to an A. But yeah, it. Honestly, it's pretty much borderline broken. Um, but all right, we'll go ahead and leave that there. All right. Next up, uh, good, good old uh, uh, Valkyries, Spellblades, all that kind of deal. Easy A tier. Uh, they're not super dominant or anything, but they're uh, they're pretty much one of the top tier uh, support classes. 
They can be a very good frontline tank while being able to still throw around items. They can be your dedicated item user. They can be your dedicated buffer uh, while also still, you know, being a good uh, good wall. Um, they can self heal. Like just their ability to to mix and match different skills to be able to throw around either healing or support or damage or whatever else at any point in their turn makes them very flexible. Um, which uh, Warlock uh, kind of uh, flies into S tier for that for me personally because it's like it's basically a lot of what the Spellblade does, but they advance it even farther. Uh, they can uh, they can do the whole uh, whip cheesiness thing. Um, they get access to shields, and as of lately, as of the last patch, spell books are very very good. Um, if you want like a frontline uh, counter unit, uh, before um, Warlocks did actually surprisingly. Uh, get picked on by spear users a good bit, and now they actually have a counter to them. Um, so, now that uh, spellbooks are useful as a counter weapon, um, like, they literally can counter any melee weapon in the game. Literally every single one. Even the three-tile spear, because the uh, thing can attack... Uh, even three-tile spears, even uh, the uh, um, even the whip. Uh, they can attack in all directions, three tiles, and, uh, yeah, there's a very good chance of rupture uh, when they use a, use a book. Uh, which then allows them to follow up with a cast, which is then, you know, boosted by uh, by whatever damage they had. Actually, even doing um, doing a build uh, using a uh, book as a uh, just kind of like as a backup weapon could potentially be useful. Um, I don't believe there's any way to uh, uh, to force uh, Draconics to potentially uh, scale off of a second weapon while still retaining that counter ability. Uh, but still, very solid, uh, very solid type class, just like book and shield. Makes them, uh, makes them kind of serve that same role as a frontline defender. Um, you can go uh, sword and uh, sword and shield if you want to go for like a sleeping type build. You can potentially go for a bunch of other type of options as well. They're very versatile. Again, just I feel like in many ways you could make the argument for just upgrading from spellblades to warlocks, but or warlocks slash witches. But it is what it is. Um, and actually, you know what I just noticed? Uh, let's get. Lindel out of there, and let's put you. This is the one that was supposed to represent Fusiliers. Sorry about that. Let's cover Lindel's class real quick, because, uh, yeah, that's also another A tier. He's basically the classic Fusilier, more or less, with more grenades instead of uh, Fumarole, so there's that. By the way, fun note, um, I actually forgot to look this up for the uh, the patch discussion. Fumarole basically is just like the opening of a volcano. So that's just, you know, kind of a, kind of a cool little... Uh, little bit of deep dive trivia for the kinds of stuff that uh, that he comes up with. Anyway, moving on here. Uh, Dark Priest. Uh, kind of beat here. They're fun. They're good. <laughs> they do the job well enough. Uh, their uh, uh, their uh, uh, action moves are pretty strong these days, especially with, uh, uh, with Poison basically being amazing these days. Um, it's... Well, actually, I guess even their their uh, class marks are easier to get a hold of. So, you know what? All right, they can be an A as well. Okay, we got to have something in the B, C, and D tiers. Okay, so we're going to have we're gonna have it in the B tier. That's fine. That's fine. All right, golems. This is unusual because golems are pretty threatening. Um, but just the fact that uh, they can... They can be bullied uh, by a lot of uh, a lot of other units. They have a little bit of a hard time dealing with numbers. Um, if there's multiple in the way, I mean, they're going to be a very good barricade, but they're kind of kind of meh, you know. <laughs> They've got some very very strong moves, and potentially uh, with like a power core and stuff like that, you can uh, you can make them one of the highest hitting and most overpowered units in the game. But um, on average, the ones that you'll run into uh, with the AI. Um, they mostly hang out in the C tier. So it's one of those cases where I'm pretty sure the power core thing either has been addressed already or will be, so I'm not really counting that as fair, so to speak. Um, I actually don't remember. It's been a while. It's been a while since that's been discussed. Um, and actually, before I forget, uh, let's go ahead and pop Griffins up to the A tier. Um, so the reason that I put them above the Cockatrice is just they're, they seem to be a little bit faster and their moves are, uh, are a bit more consistent. Um, so... Typically, they get their stuns out before um, before you see Cockatrice is getting their petrifications out, which means that usually they can bully units a lot faster. So as long as they don't get surrounded, they can potentially single out and deal with uh, individual units very quickly. Um, they usually will double turn almost uh, any frontline unit that's out there. 
Uh, Cockatrice is a bit less consistent with that, though they do still pull it off pretty regularly. Okie dokie, what's next here? Uh, we got Necromancers, probably in B tier these days. Uh, good, uh, good casters you can also get available uh, early on. Um, you can get a uh, Necromark from Nibith still. Um, you can get access to most of their spellbooks uh, pretty early on, and then you just kind of fill out the rest of it once you get to uh, Denim's shop. So definitely uh, definitely can access everything that they need to. Um, they're perfectly viable from start to finish. Um, I just think they look weird, personally, but it does, that's really kind of a non-factor. They're a good class. They're a very interestingly versatile class. It's kind of neat to have access to a uh, guaranteed hit sniper. Like, they're, uh, they're a pretty excellent cherry tapping unit, potentially. Um, they're very good at uh, getting rid of stuff with high health. Uh, for those that didn't know, uh, they're, uh, they're kind of unique uh, crossbow half finisher there. Uh, just basically uh, pretty, uh, pretty cheap to use and reduces max health by a decent bit and can't miss. So, nice uh, thing there. All right, next up... Man, we're going to have to just completely get rid of the D tier at this rate. I'm trying to figure out where exactly to put everybody, but... Hmm. It's hard to pick out any bad units here. Alright, um, Oshon with the Dragonborn. Um, hmm. Yeah, I kind of feel like they're worth the effort. I mean, good damage. They've got interesting breath moves and things like that. Uh, they're just a nice, fun reward for uh, for being able to actually recruit her at all. Uh, next up, we got Angel Knights. Uh... B tier just because they're kind of later on in the game. But uh, that being said, you know, they fly. You turn your basic humanoid units into flying units. They can be tanks. They can be uh, harassers. They can uh, they can potentially do some crazy turnaround moves with their uh, with their songs. Actually, screw it. That's an S tier. What are we talking about? Um, those, uh, those songs are potentially just complete uh, squad wipers. So we'll go ahead and throw that up there. Uh, next up, we got Headhunter. Easy A there. Um, basically just... Well, <laughs> he, he's a power trickster. It, it, it's interesting. Again, kind of like Oshion, he's, he's an interesting unique class that you get a hold of for doing his little side quest. It's not hard uh, to potentially go get. It's just a nice little uh, end game reward there. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put him over there. Uh, next up, Haberem. You know, similar type deal. I Actually, I kind of want to put him... Okay, this is weird, I know. I want to put him in B, so... Basically, Blade Knight there, the whole deal is he is the more dedicated frontline Swordmaster kind of thing. So he's like the Swordmaster, except he's more like the vanilla game Swordmaster, in a way. Um, so dedicated to the two-handed uh, katanas there. He's got this, like, charge mechanic that he does where MP turns into damage and stuff like that. It's cool. It's a cool gimmick kind of thing, but his complete lack of ranged options kind of limits him a bit. Um, still, very strong unit. And you're guaranteed to get him on pretty much every route, so whatever, we'll put him there. It's really only ranged options, but not everybody really needs a ranged option. It's just for the purpose of putting somebody in B tier, dang it. All the classes are too good these days, including Terror Knights. I know, I know. A Terror Knight in S tier, what the hell is going on? So, right, here's the deal. Ever since their last few buffs, a few interesting things have happened. A... Heavy weapons, which they specialize in, got sped up. B, uh, they um, uh, they got access to heavy spears, and C, uh, they got access or Lament of the Dead got buffed so that it reduces TP now. So this creates a situation where you could believe a Terranite to go entirely off on its own, get surrounded by units, debuff and DTP multiple <laughs> units around them, while still uh, potentially uh, attacking up to like six units at one time. Like, I've legit just had a random, generic, just nobody Terranite with a heavy spear go off into a corner and just keep counterattacking all kinds of units back and forth while repeatedly spamming them into the dead and just basically using its turn to use an item to heal itself. Um, and aside from that, uh, just targeting monster units to, uh, to get nice bits of health back since it scales off of health now. So potentially they just use, like, they get into a fight, they get a little bit of damage, they go in and uh, use their health suck as a, uh, as a bit of a uh, opener. Uh, they, they throw some poison out there to start weakening anybody. Uh, they start uh, spamming uh, Lament of the Dead, um, which is also now draining away TP, which suddenly means that potentially it's shutting down a lot of, uh, a lot of finishers around them, which 
basically now means that they're not getting a lot of those debuffs that they were worried about. Like, debuffs are their big counter at this point. Um, and just when it comes to just absolutely scary units in the front, I feel like TKs are uh, are definitely t definitely doing that job right now. Um, so, like, if there was still the, uh, the kill count requirement from the SNES version, uh, that would feel very fitting at the moment. Um, so, yeah, I, I love it. I know that... <sighs> I know they're still going to have their slowness, weakness, and things like that, but just, it feels wrong to even put them in A. They're just really good right now. Um, anyway, moving on. Uh, basic Swordmasters, uh, you know, I kind of want to put them in C, because they've got a similar thing to how the how the Berserkers have at the moment, um, where with so many units getting all kinds of different buffs all over the place, sometimes it's harder to justify dual-wield builds. And I kind of feel like they mostly come into their own once you start uh, getting stuff like the Phantom Cloak. But either way, they're still a pretty good class. Um, I really wouldn't change too much about them. The double buffs are still fantastic. Uh, the sword options are still fantastic. I just mean comparative. You know what? No, it, no I can't. It, it's a B. It's still a B. It's still a, it, it doesn't deserve to go and see. <laughs> anyway, fine. Moving on. All right, fine. I gotta put something in D. Uh, we're gonna put the um, uh, we're gonna put the warden down there. I'm not saying the warden is a bad class, even though that is objectively what I'm doing by putting it in the D tier. The only reason the warden is down there is because it's kind of a complicated class to get a hold of, because you can only get it in Palace of the Dead, um, unless something has changed somewhere. Um, but yeah, you can only get it down there. You specifically have to go go get a pumpkin head. You have to go get the class marks to turn the pumpkin head into this other class. It's it's basically one of the hardest ones to get a hold of at the moment, um, just in terms of doing all the steps required from scratch and all that. Um, well, not counting unique classes. Uh, other than that, they're, I mean, they're basically like a Terra Knight. It's, I just don't know if they're really worth the effort. All right, next up, we got the Octopus, um, eh, probably see, no, you know what? We're going to put them in D tier only because they can be very easily cheesed. As long as they're not in water, they're, they, they're very basic. Um, like, potentially either a parry or deflect, depending on what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, thing they're likely to do, is basically going to be all you need to shut them down if you get them off the water tiles. And especially if you barricade them away from the water, they kind of just become, well, they're just calamari at that point. Um... Not super defensive. They can still do a pretty decent amount of damage on their own, but they really need water to get their big moves going. Um, so I don't feel like they're as scary as they once were, and they're definitely not as fast as a lot of the other uh, monster units out there. Speaking of, the Hydra can probably go down there as well. Uh, they're scarier. You know what? No, they're a C tier. They're scarier than they were at some point, but there's still not exactly much to talk about in terms of defense. Um, all right, and actually speaking of just dragons in general, they're probably going to be in C tier. No, they're going to be in D tier. I'm trying to think if that's necessary. You know what? No, we're, we'll put the Hydra down there too. It's not that they don't do a lot of damage. It's not that they can't be threatening. I mean, Disembowel is one of, one of the potentially biggest turnaround moves that there is right now, but they're very predictable. Um, they, it's not very often that dragons will surprise you unless there's just an extra one that you weren't paying attention to. Uh, so they're just kind of basic. They either use disembowel or, like, they fly and they use a breath move or they run up an attack. I'm not saying that they need anything else beyond that. It's just, it's just what they do. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're basically a battering ram and a battering ram is easy to predict. So we'll go ahead and leave them down there. Uh, next up, White Knight S tier. Like, amazingly S tier. Actually, we'll go ahead and put that probably just under Cleric. Uh, just because, yeah, self buff. You get, a, like, three different buffs that you get off a single thing. Also protects you from getting dispelled most of the time for your strength. And uh, also has a pretty nice variety of uh, potential good weapons to use for that particular thing. So definitely might as well put them up there. Um, which, actually, speaking of, we've got the uh, Paragon. And we're going to put them in B. They're most they kind of feel like a bit of a gimmick class to me um it's cool that they have so many skills that they can use off the finisher set you know their uh their whole gimmick is pretty cool because you know they're supposed to be aggressive basically um it's just when you're comparing how good the white knight is to how just kind of neat the paragon is 
it's just like, dude, the White Knight's so freaking good. <laughs> so yeah, personal opinion, but we're gonna put that there. Um, Paladin. This feels it feels bad. It's just regardless of whatever the, else the class does, you get him so late in the game. What like, what are you doing, Lance? What, what are you doing? Anyway, um, next uh, princess S tier, basically the lord, but it's pre-built. Uh, can be a tank, can be a whole health steely type of deal, can basically uh, uh, one-shot units pretty much right out of the gate when you get them. Like, Conviction plus a Heavy Spear still, still absolutely dominates right now. So I'll go ahead and put that there. Uh, actually, same thing for the Dancer. Um, very, very good potential uh, unit for just basically cheesing half the map on their own. Um doing their uh, their charm dance plus uh, just finishers off of a uh, instrument will pretty much leave stuff in a permanent state of chaos wherever they are uh, they can potentially uh, just boost their luck over and over very solid class uh, no questions there um, which actually speaking of the wish or wiki or which but it's spelled weird um, a tier I mean they're they're fantastic they can buff themselves. They get all the good spells and things like that. They're just kind of over there, though. All right. Um, all right. Geomancers, represented by Olivia over here. I'm going to put him B just for comparison. Um, actually, wait. Do Okay. This is weird because I'm trying to think if I have... Okay, no. It's... Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. She's going to be the Shamans. Uh, Geomancers are going to be Sestina. So she's over here. So Geomancers are going to be here. Shamans are going to be here. Only because Shamans get all of the big, boomy, you know, health moves. Uh, whereas the uh, uh, the Geomancer kind of is... It's a gimmick. It's a it's a gimmick class. It's strong. It's got some very, very, uh, you know, good potential strengths to it. It's mostly bent around that gimmick there. Actually, no, wait, 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 wait. I'm missing something. Because I remember, I remember there being something very, very cheesy you could do with uh, Geomancers. Admittedly, it's the middle of the night right now, so I might be forgetting something. But as of the last run that I did using them, they kind of felt very gimmicky and a very fun class to use. But I wouldn't say they were o like overly crushing things left and right. But whatever. Um, all right, next up, fairies. Uh, I'm gonna put in C. So reason for this, like specifically, these are like familiars um, and all that kind of thing. Now, reason for this, they can be rogues. So like if we're comparing, fairies can either go rogue or they can go familiar for their healing type stuff. As far as healing goes, any kind of healing stuff is very, very strong, obviously. Like it's it's just one of those things that's, that gets absolutely crazy. However, unlike uh, clerics, they don't get access to some of the heavier armors, meaning uh, that they're going to be taking a lot more damage, meaning that you can much more consistently just batter them down. Um, so more often than not, you can get them drained out of uh, drained out of their healing because more often than not, they've also been spending all of their MP uh, to repeatedly go around, uh, you know, casting at people. So kind of just leads to the situation where they tend to be low on MP. You can batter them down. That's why they're going in C instead. If they did conserve their MP and they're running around shield bashing and stuff like that, they would probably go up to an A. Uh, but just for the purposes of kind of filling out this list a little bit more, I kind of feel like they're going to go in C. They don't really need a buff, so to speak. They're kind of perfect as they are right now. Um, I'm just saying they're, you know, they're they're very versatile. But the way that uh, they tend to uh, to present themselves is as a squishy target. So we'll put that there. Uh, next up, we got priest. Um, I kind of feel like they're like the cleric, but worse. Uh, last Rite, very strong. Not as good as Tabula Rasa, because Tabula Rasa is pretty much the best action move in the game, as far as I'm concerned. Um, next up, we got Ranger. Uh, B, I think. Uh, his teleport move's pretty good. He's got good uh, weapon options and such. Um, relatively easy to get a hold of, though you do get them a little bit later, and you're kind of locked into one particular route. Um, nothing really bad about him, just, uh, just, yeah, he's kind of more just a fun unit to have around. You have him around because he's your dude, not specifically because, you know, you were going for a particular build in a lot of cases. At least, at least in my experience, you know, I'm sure everyone's got their stories. Um, 
Personally, I don't like going down the route that takes a vice, so whatever. He's going to be in B. Um, all right, let's see. Juggernaut. Um, I, th I think C. I mean, they run up and hit things. They, they've kind of got a similar issue to these guys over here. It's just run up and hit is kind of their main mode, um, but they tend to have potentially more buried equipment, so whatever, we'll, we'll leave that there. Uh, Hoplite, on the other hand, A tier, as uh, suddenly they can be a uh, complete impenetrable wall in your way. Same thing with Knights over here, um, though you know their support abilities are very, very good. Uh, they, ha they did end up getting nerfed since last time, at least a little bit. They're still a very, very, very good unit, but seriously, they did not need exorcism. Anyway, uh, Knight Commander, S tier, of course. You can, you just can't get her out of S tier, frankly. So, there we go. She goes up here, just under the White Knight. Um, next up, Liches, another S tier, but kind of low S tier here. Um, they can teleport, they've got a lot of, uh, a lot of good spell options. Um, but a bit of a pain to get a hold of. They're kind of worth it, though. Um, so we'll go ahead and leave that there. Actually, one thing I forgot to mention earlier about the Astromancer. Uh, yeah, teleport plus self-heal. We should actually put him in... No, that's right. He was staying at the top of uh, A tier. Uh, just because, yeah, it takes a very long time to get him. Yes, arguably the Lich is not terribly far behind there. But, I mean, you can turn any generic into them. You, you potentially get that dozens of hours earlier. Alright, uh, next, Ninjas, another A tier, just potentially good damage, can shut down multiple units in all directions. You know this whole song and dance. They're good at what they do. Um, next, Patriarchs. Uh, B. They're reliable, just you probably won't go out of your way to get them. Uh, summoner. Um... We'll just say A. They're they're a fun gimmick unit. Um, you know, good stats and things, good options available to them. I kind of feel like they're a little dry compared to some of the other classes, but that's just kind of an unfair bias, to be fair. it's uh, They're good at what they do. They, they do a lot of good summons. They do uh, good, uh, just kind of good support and all that kind of thing. They fit their, their look very well. Um, I'm not sure if they ever did intend that to be a reference or not. But uh, we'll just go ahead and drop them up there. Um, okay, basic beast tamers. Uh, a tier for sure. Um, very, uh, they can boost uh, boost any monster unit into S tier without too much issue. They tend to have good weapon options on them. They tend to be uh, pretty good uh, good offense. Mostly they drop down to A because the AI tends to be really dumb and charge forward with them. Uh, like, if they just kind of kept them around the midline, they'd be very, uh, very threatening. Uh, but again, the AI is just bad about protecting them, so they kind of typically will throw out a boost or two, they'll throw out an attack or two, and then get crushed. Uh, speaking of crushing, I still feel like warriors are at the bottom of S tier. Um, because, yeah, hitting anything twice is probably going to smush it real good. Um, same thing for... Well, Canopus can go into A tier. He he's not overly devastating damage wise, but he can control entire areas of the map by himself just by sheer evasion and regeneration alone. So beautiful there. Uh, basic wizardy type stuff. B. Um, just because they don't really get armor. Uh, other than that, though, they usually can stay out of range. They can uh, shut stuff down at very long range. So whatever. B. Just just to hopefully carry around the fact that they need to be at range. And then lastly, um, another one for the... Uh, ah, screwed. I wanted to put him in, in, into S, S tier as a joke, but Tammuz is an A tier. He's a, he's a good... He's a good dude. <laughs> now, I know Tammuz doesn't really have a unique class as a word, but he has a unique class combination. He can be any of the lizard classes, but he can fly. So if you really want to like do a juggernaut or a hoplite or you know even a patriarch or whatever else, I think he can still do patriarch. I can't remember right now. Just do Tammuz for that. He's a lizard, but he can fly. It's great. Um, actually, I think he's technically locked into the orc class set, if I'm not mistaken. Not sure. Either way, he flies. He's heavy. He's good. Use that guy. Um, not really much more to say about that. He can go a lot of different directions. He's, he's just a solid unit no matter what way you go. And uh, also is a fantastic case to go neutral over law or chaos or, you know, just just go neutral. 
you get the uh, you get the best bird. All right, so that'll be that. You guys have yourselves a good one. Um, curious to hear what you guys think of these patches, and uh, yeah, take care.